In ancient times, when the Iroquois Confederacy was first formed, the peacemaker brought the chiefs of five Indian nations together and recited the great law. The peacemaker admonished the chiefs to consider the effects that their decisions would have even into the seventh generation. Now the Iroquois people have reached their seventh generation, and their culture still survives, especially in the work of Iroquois artists. Some of the art is based on traditional themes. Some reaches into the abstract. And some of the art makes a statement. Some of the first pieces I had done in clay were huge, and they were just massive pieces and very sharp-edged and very, uh, to me, very brutal. And uh, I went from that to making the blackware pieces, which are very small, delicate, handheld pieces that are very fragile. And so it was a very big personal change for me. The blackware pieces are done using a southwestern technique that was perfected by Native Americans. The pots are not glazed, but are polished with a smooth stone which has been worn by water. The pots are burnished with the stone three times and then pit-fired in sawdust. While a potter's wheel is used to make the blackware, Tammy Tarbell utilizes a coil method to hand-build cylinders that will be shaped into figures. Tarbell calls the figures her doll series. They're her way of exploring the roles of native women. People have a pretty clear picture, I think, about Indian men and their pride and all this and that. And I think what happened was uh, I would go to powwow and I would, I would hear uh, um, certain men of the group talk about treatment of Indian women and how they're so political and they have so much power and all this and that that uh, I began to question how true is it? Are we back in Hiawatha? You know, and this wonderful story and uh, how true is it? How much power do Native women have and are they exercising it or is this just a nice wonderful story to feed the people? I just don't see the need to uh, uplift men in my artwork. They have a pretty good time in doing it themselves and I just feel that women, though native women, really need to be uplifted. So that's my job. Aside from providing a positive image for native women, Tarbell has also explored the traditions of the Iroquois people. The Heritage Wall is a monumental work composed of three panels. It is a mosaic of fired clay. The wall was to me, um, a message, something I could give back to the community. 
The left panel depicts images from the Iroquois creation myth. It includes the Sky Woman who fell to Earth and the twin boys who were responsible for all the good and evil in the world. At the base of the panel, Tarbell formed a sewage pipe, a reminder of all the evil which pollutes the Earth. The central panel shows the animals that represent the nine clans of the Iroquois people. At the base of the central panel is the turtle, who according to Iroquois legend, supports the Earth. Growing from the turtle's back is the Tree of Peace. When the Confederacy was formed, the warring nations of the Iroquois buried their weapons under the tree. For Tarbell, the Tree of Peace signifies a unified way of life. As I was building it, it was a time to make peace with myself. That was the main issue in, in that part of the wall. Um, in trying to get um, I guess other people who maybe are, were probably on the same path of destruction that I was on to notice that, that this is something that needed to be done was to make peace with oneself. Tarbell calls the last panel of the wall the beckoning panel. The person who is, who is sitting at the bottom is, is at a place where, you know, he's, he, she is on a path of self-destruction and they have this choice to continue where they're going or but there's a vision involved here the vision of the two traditional people beckoning him to come back to traditional ways and I found that for myself and and I've talked to you know many other native people who are you know caught uh, between two worlds, so to speak, and who are on that same path of going back to traditional ways. Peter Jones is an Onondaga artist who works in clay. Although his style differs vastly from that of Tammy Tarbell, there are some similarities in their work. Like Tarbell, Jones is a potter. He also creates figures which make a statement about being Native American. American tragedy depicts an alcoholic. It could be Indian, it could be any alcoholic. That was a personal piece. Sort of with my, my own bouts with alcohol. And uh, I did that piece about the time I quit. Another reclining figure is called American Holocaust. It represents Bigfoot, the Sioux chief who was killed with hundreds of his people by the U.S. cavalry during the massacre at Wounded Knee. When they think of the Holocaust, they think of the Jewish Holocaust uh, or uh, something equally horrendous, uh, thousands of people being killed. And this happened in America. This was uh, in the 1800s, late 1800s, when uh, a whole village was wiped out. And the figure I portrayed in that is of uh, Chief Bigfoot, who was shot, but he wasn't fatally shot. He froze to death. And uh, he froze to death in the, in the stance that I uh, sculpted. It's something I think you need to remember when you think of all these other things that are going on in the world. This happened here, you know. We're so removed from war, it seems like we, we don't think it can happen here, but it's happened here before to us. Like other Iroquois artists, Jones doesn't limit his subject matter to the woodland Indians of upstate New York. He feels that all Native Americans have common problems and a shared history, a history of genocide and dislocation. The theme of American Exodus is the removal of Native people from their natural homelands. The two figures could be from any tribe. The man is looking forward, the woman is looking back. The baby she is holding represents the promise of the future. One of the figures by Peter Jones is called the Storyteller. That's a, uh, based on the southwestern figures of storytellers, and um, this one is an uh, Iroquois storyteller. And she has four figures crawling on her that are um, all influences on Iroquois life. The uh, police representing authority, the priest representing, of course, religion, 
which has always had a big um, influence on the Indians. And uh, Uncle Sam, and I've got him portraying him with his hand out, always wanting taxes, always wanting money, always wanting support. And uh, the entrepreneur, the Indian entrepreneur with a handful of money, and uh, trying to persuade the, the, the Iroquois which way to go. It's, uh, he's opposite religion. In the hands of the woman is the uh, emerging new Indian, the, the Indian today coming out. And he's emerging um, with none of these influences yet. And uh, the, the woman holding him, her hands are tied, representing uh, our position right now as far as sovereignty is concerned. We're not really sovereign. We're, um, we're influenced by all these things. Sovereignty is a word I feel that has been thrown around a lot lately within the last couple of years. Um, it's been used to say that we're, we're sovereign, but we're not really sovereign. We're, it's defined by Congress as we're sovereign as Congress is, uh, allows us to be. If we were truly sovereign, we wouldn't uh, have anything to do with the United States government. We wouldn't go to them for make decisions in the Supreme Court. We wouldn't have uh, state police or anything on our reservations. That's sovereignty. That would be, uh, we would be a separate country. Tom Huff is a sculptor who lives on the Onondaga Reservation, south of Syracuse. I try to do different things, different styles, different, um, different statements. Um, I always try to work in a variety of stone with a variety of ideals and styles. That, that way it keeps things interesting. And I'm always, try, always experimenting, always trying to do different things with the stone. Like many of the artists we spoke to, Tom Huff feels uncomfortable talking about his work. He says that the pieces are best left unexplained. To explain them would give an incomplete picture, since many of the pieces have layers of meaning. Even the titles are sometimes plays on words. American in Need of Arms is Huff's tribute to Terry Anderson and other hostages in Lebanon. The title refers to the Arms for Hostages deal, which took place during the Reagan administration. The nearly abstract figure is blindfolded and armless, a figure without power. Huff says that the armlessness refers to the lack of action by the United States government to deal effectively with Iran for the release of the hostages. The figure could also represent any hostage or political prisoner in the world today. Trained buffalo shows the abstract figure of a buffalo. The dead carcass lies on top of a platform which was created from spare parts that the artist found at an abandoned railroad site. Three railroad spikes welded to a rusted plate form a platform which is reminiscent of the traditional burial scaffold of the Plains Indians. Underneath the scaffold is a piece of toy train track. The entire work is suggestive of the death of the buffalo. The expansion into the West by trains and white settlers led to the near annihilation of the buffalo, which in turn led to the downfall of the Plains Indians, who depended upon the animal for life. On a more humorous level, Huff created a piece